The United States Army in World War II used a variety of standard and non-standard dress and battle uniforms, which often changed depending upon the theater of war, climatic environment, and supply exigencies. Topic: U.S. Army men's service uniforms. U.S. Army basic service uniforms consisted of a winter service uniform of olive drab wool worn in temperate weather and a summer service uniform of khaki, tan, fabric. In addition to the service uniforms worn for ordinary duty and dress purposes there were a variety of fatigue and combat uniforms. Summer and winter service uniforms were during their respective seasons in the continental U.S. During World War II the European Theater of Operations Northwestern Europe was considered a year-round temperate uniform zone and the Pacific Theater of Operations a year-round tropical uniform zone. In the Mediterranean Theater U.S. soldiers wore both seasonal uniforms. Topic. Enlisted men's service uniform Topic. Winter uniforms The issue enlisted men's winter service uniform in 1941 consisted of a four-pocket coat and trousers in olive drab shade 33 light shade 16 ounces wool serge. Shirts with two patch pockets and without shoulder straps were either 8.2 ounces chino cotton khaki, a light tan, shade number 1, or 10.5 ounces olive drab wool light shade number 33. Either shirt could be worn under the coat, however, the cotton shirt could not be worn as an outer garment with the wool trousers. The first shirt had a stand-up collar like a typical dress shirt. In 1941 the shirt was redesigned with collar band removed so the collar would lay flat when worn in the field. In 1941 the wool necktie for the winter uniform was black and the summer necktie was khaki cotton. In February 1942 a universal mohair wool necktie in olive drab shade 3 replaced both previous neckties. The OD Shade 3 necktie was shortly superseded by a khaki shade 5 wool cotton blend necktie. The single color khaki shade 5 necktie was mandated for both summer and winter service uniforms. An overcoat of OD Shade 33 Melton wool was worn in cold weather. Topic: Summer uniforms. The enlisted man's summer service uniform consisted of the cotton khaki shade No. 1 uniform shirt with matching trousers. The coat for this uniform was discontinued for enlisted men in the 1930s. Whenever the shirt was worn as an outer garment the necktie was tucked between the second and third button of the shirt. After the invasion of the Philippines in 1942 the khaki uniform was largely replaced as a summer combat uniform by the herringbone twill uniforms and the khaki uniform was almost always reserved as a summer dress uniform. Topic. Soldier's headgear The enlisted soldiers' round crown visor caps were no longer issued to enlisted troops after 1942. Thereafter, only the garrison cap in either olive drab for winter or khaki tan for summer with piping in the color of the soldiers' basic specialty branch remained as the universal enlisted service headgear. The soldier's distinctive unit insignia was worn on the left front if the unit issued the DUI. However, after 1943 the manufacture of duis were suspended for the duration of the war. Topic. Footwear 
Issue footwear consisted of low quarter russet brown leather cap toe boots. For more on Army footwear see Combat Uniforms chapter below. Topic. Officers' service uniforms Topic. Winter uniforms The male officer's winter service uniform in 1941 consisted of a four-button four-pocket coat of finer wool fabric in olive drab shade number 51. Dark shade i.e. a very dark forest green with brownish hue, nicknamed greens. The coat was worn with a russet brown leather Sam Brown belt until 1942 when the leather belt was replaced by a cloth belt of matching fabric to the coat. Officers could wear trousers matching the color and fabric of the coat, or optionally they were allowed taupe-colored, trousers, officially called drab shade 54 of the same material as the coat nicknamed pinks leading to the nickname pinks and greens for the iconic combination officers were also authorized to use the more durable olive drab shade 33 enlisted serge uniforms except for the enlisted men's four pocket service coat as long as they were not mixed with olive drab shade 51 or drab shade 54 clothing officers od light shade heavy melton wool long and short overcoats were authorized as well as a taupe rain coat by 1941 officers' shirts consisted of khaki shade 1 cotton or tropical wool shirts to be worn with either the summer or winter uniforms and olive drab wool shirts in light or dark shade with the addition of shoulder straps depending on the uniform worn. Officers also had additional shirt color and fabric options, OD dark shade number 50 or number 51 and in 1944 drab shade number 54 taupe shirts were authorized. Officers wore black and khaki neckties with winter and summer uniforms respectively, like enlisted soldiers, until after February 1942 when the universal neckties were changed to khaki shade 5 for all ranks. As with enlisted men, officers could only wear the olive drab shirt as an outer garment with the wool uniform. The shirt had to be either the same shade OD as the trousers or dark shade with the taupe trousers. Topic. Summer uniforms Male officers' summer service uniforms usually consisted of the wash and wear cotton khaki shade 1 uniforms like those of the enlisted men, the main difference being that the shirts had shoulder straps added. An OD dark shade wool shirt and cotton khaki trouser combination was also authorized for officers in tropical zones. However, for dress purposes officers also had the option of purchasing a khaki shade 1 summer service uniform of tropical weight suiting fabric. This uniform was identical in cut to the winter office's uniform. However, the cloth belt of the winter service coat was omitted. Topic: <laughs> Officers headgear Officers' headgear for the winter uniform consisted of either an olive drab OD 51 peaked cap with a russet leather visor or a garrison cap matching the OD fabric shade worn. The garrison cap for officers was piped around the curtain with black and gold cord except for general officers whose piping was all gold. The officers' rank insignia was worn on the left front side of the garrison cap. The peak cap was also available in khaki tan with a removable top to be worn with the khaki summer uniform. Optionally khaki garrison caps were worn with the summer khaki uniform with the same piping as the winter OD version. Topic. Footwear 
Footwear normally consisted of russet brown leather type 1 leather soled service shoes. For more on army footwear see combat uniforms chapter below. Topic: The Eisenhower jacket. During the war in Europe a short jacket was adopted by General Eisenhower as an option to the four-pocket service coat. The so-called Eisenhower or Ike Jacket Eisenhower jacket was popular. It closely resembled the short British battle dress jacket that inspired it. However, development and approval by the army was slow. Except for small runs of jackets made for enlisted soldiers in England, the U.S. Army didn't provide the jacket as an issue item to enlisted soldiers until the war in Europe was almost over. There were several versions. Two Ike jackets were manufactured in England and issued to troops in Europe before the jackets were approved army-wide. Both of these were essentially wool versions of the 1941 pattern Poplin Field jacket. These jackets were authorized only in the ETO. There were also non-standard conversions made for GIs particularly officers by tailors in the United Kingdom with degrees of variation. The standard issue M44 model 1944 wool field jacket made of fine quality olive drab OD33 wool was originally designed as a liner to be worn under the M1943 combat jacket. While originally intended as a field or combat jacket, it was nearly always reserved for service or dress wear. The M44 ultimately replaced the four-button service dress jacket for enlisted troops. However, the phase out of the enlisted service coat was only completed after the war was over. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Men's fatigue duty uniform. The blue denim uniform was for wear during fatigue duties. It was composed of a denim jacket and trousers and a broad-brimmed denim clamdigger hat. In 1941 it was replaced by herringbone twill HBT one-piece coveralls intended for aircraft mechanics and armored crews and a two-piece HBT work uniform both in olive drab shade 3. Topic. Wear of insignia and badges with the service uniform With the service uniform the enlisted arm and branch of service insignia was embossed on circular pins, while the officer's insignia was free work, i.e., open design with no backing. Officer's arm of service pins. U.S for the regular army were worn on the upper lapels and their branch of service pins were worn on their lower lapels. M wore the U.S. disc on the right and the branch disc on the left upper lapel. The rank of officers was worn on the outer edge of the shoulder loops whereas enlisted soldiers wore rank chevrons three inches wide points up on both upper arms. Organizational patches were worn on the left upper shoulder only. When the coat was worn no insignia was worn on the shirts except so on patches. When the shirt was worn as an outer garment officers wore pin on insignia on the shirt. Until 1942 the officer's U.S. pin was worn on the right collar point and the officer's branch insignia was worn on the left. The officer's rank was worn on the outer ends of the officer's shoulder loops as on the coat. After, September 1942 the U.S. pin was deleted and the rank of the wearer was displayed on the right collar point. Distinctive unit insignia pins featuring the unit's coat of arms were worn in the center of the epaulette for officers and on lower lapels for enlisted men. These devices were rarely seen during the war as a metal conservation measure. 
Wound chevrons awarded from 1918 to 1932 for wounds in combat were worn on the lower right sleeve between the cuff and the elbow. Service stripes, or hash marks, awarded for every three years of service were worn on the lower left sleeve. World War I overseas chevrons created 1918 and or World War II overseas bars created 1944 awarded for each six months combat service overseas were worn on the lower left sleeve between the elbow and lower sleeve, but above the service stripes. The World War II bars were worn over the World War I chevrons. After 1953 the service stripes were kept on the lower left sleeve and the overseas service stripes were moved to the lower right sleeve. Parachutists' wings, pilots' wings, the expert infantryman badge, the combat infantryman badge, or the combat medical badge are worn above the left top tunic pocket. Discharged soldiers returning home wore the embroidered honorable discharge emblem or ruptured duck on the uniform over the right top tunic pocket on a diamond-shaped olive drab cloth backing. American and foreign medals or medal ribbons are worn above the left top tunic pocket. American and foreign unit citation ribbons are worn over the right top tunic pocket. The Meritorious Unit Commendation Patch created 1944 awarded to a unit for at least six months of exemplary combat service or combat support is worn on the lower right sleeve above the cuff and below the wound chevrons. Topic. Women's U.S. Army Service Uniforms Female members of the U.S. Army during World War II were assigned to either the Army Nurse Corps or the Women's Auxiliary Army Corps The ANC preceded the WAAC so the two branches had separate uniform distinctions. Army Nurse Corps uniforms Prior to 1943, the ANC Winter Service uniform consisted of the ANC pattern dark blue cap or garrison cap with maroon piping, suit jacket with maroon cuff braid and gold army buttons, light blue or white shirt, black tie and light blue skirt, shoes were black or white. The ANC summer service uniform consisted of a similar suit in beige with maroon shoulder strap piping and cuff braid, beige ANC cap or beige garrison cap with maroon piping, white shirt, and black four in hand tie. During World War II the first flight nurse's uniform consisted of a blue wool battle dress jacket, blue wool trousers and a blue wool men's style maroon piped garrison cap. The uniform was worn with either the ANC light blue or white shirt and black tie. After 1943 the ANC adopted olive drab service uniforms similar to the newly formed WAC. Nurses wore Army Hospital whites on ward duty. WAAC and WAC uniforms In May 1942 Congress approved the creation of the Women's Auxiliary Army Corps. Although the ANC were actual service members of the U.S. Army, the members of the WAAC were not, so they wore Army-style uniforms with distinctly different insignia than U.S. Army service members. In the summer of 1943 the WAAC was converted to the Women's Army Corps WAC. From that point the WAC were U.S. Army service members and their insignia was changed to that of the regular Army. Belafair, Judith A. The Women's Army Corps, a commemoration of World War II service. The Women's Army Corps, Center of Military History, 17 February 2005, history.army.mil slash brochures slash wac slash wac.htm. 
female service dress went through an evolution of patterns over the course of the war years, however throughout the period the service uniforms both summer and winter generally consisted of the whack pattern hobby hat or women's garrison cap, a women's suit coat, shirtwaist, four-in-hand tie, skirt, russet leather women's service shoes and handbag. The women's olive drab wool Iked jacket was also worn as were women's service trousers. The colors essentially mirrored those of their male counterparts of corresponding rank in the equivalent service uniform although fabrics differed. There were also special off-duty dresses of summer beige and winter tan. After the WAC were established the ANC adopted the WAC officers' uniforms, except for the ANC pattern hat and the ANC pattern handbag. However, those items were changed to olive drab and russet leather respectively. The ANC off-duty dress was a separate ANC pattern in olive drab shade 51 or beige. The previous ANC beige summer service uniform with maroon trim was retained except that the tie was changed to maroon. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Women's fatigue uniforms. Nurses wore army hospital whites on ward duty although a seersucker version with brown and white stripes was created because the whites were hard to maintain in some overseas areas. This dress was inspired by a whack seersucker version the same color. Sage green fatigue uniforms of herringbone cotton twill for women, along with women's combat boots, field jackets and flight clothing, were manufactured by the U.S. Army during World War II. However, when women's versions of these items were not available, as was often the case in overseas areas, men's issue work, fatigue clothing was used instead. The M1942 HBT Clam digger. Utility hat was used extensively by the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps. They wore it with the back of the brim flipped up and the front of the brim pulled down and nicknamed it the Daisy May Cap. It replaced the WAX distinctive hobby hat, kepi for field use and fatigue duties. Topic. U.S. Army Combat Uniform The United States Army during the interwar period followed the previous model of having a standard uniform that combined elements of both the Class A basic service uniform and Class B basic field uniform. By combining the uniforms, it was thought that time and money could be saved. Included in the clothing system was an olive drab OD wool garrison cap, olive drab wool trousers, an olive drab wool spread collared shirt worn with a black tie, an olive drab wool four-button tunic, and russet brown type 1 leather soled or type 2 rubber soled service shoes. An outer jacket or coat, either the model 1938 overcoat, mackinaw, roll collar. Or the cotton field jacket in olive drab OD3 was issued. The basic army field or combat uniform for temperate or cool climates consisted of the basic wool uniform, without tie, along with a field jacket or wool overcoat, leggings, helmet and web gear. The standard army shade was a light olive drab OD3 to medium olive drab OD7. The U.S. Marine Corps used its pre-war sage green shade and its web gear came in the pre-war mustard tan shade. In the European Theater of Operations ETO, the basic wool uniform saw the most use and had the greatest functionality, being able to keep the soldier warm in the winter with its insulation and relatively cool and breathable in northern European summer weather. However, the olive drab cotton field jacket came in for considerable criticism, it was poorly insulated and the light cotton shell provided little protection from wind or rain. 
In addition, the OD3 coloring was deemed inappropriate for use in Northern Europe, as it stood out against most backdrops, making soldiers more visible targets. Topic. Herringbone twill uniform A second and less common uniform, the herringbone twill HBT uniform was issued, made of 8.2-ounce heavy cotton herringbone twill cloth. The uniform consisted of a shirt, trousers, and initially a circular-brimmed clamdigger HBT utility hat. This was later followed by a build cap that was based on a design used by railroad workers. Initially it was meant to be worn over the basic wool uniform to provide protection, however it proved to be much better material than the primary uniform for hot weather and tropical climates. The HBTs, although initially meant for wear during fatigue duties, were very commonly used as combat clothing, especially in hot weather. It was used as such in nearly all of the major theaters of combat that the U.S. was involved in. The original M1941 uniform came in a light sage green color that faded to a light green with repeated washing. The later M1943 version had small changes in tailoring and came in dark olive drab OD7. Topic: The M1943 uniform. The M1943 uniform came into service in the early half of World War II. The uniform was designed as a layered system, meant to be worn over the wool shirt and trouser and in conjunction with a wool sweater and liners in colder weather. The most recognizable part of the uniform is the standardized M1943 field jacket. It was longer than the earlier 1941 field jacket, coming down to the upper thighs. It was made of windproof cotton sateen, most were issued in a new darker olive drab color OD7. The jacket also had a detachable hood, drawstring waist, two large angled breast pockets, and two lower skirt pockets. The trousers were made out of the same olive drab OD7 cotton sateen material and white cotton twill inner lining, and were equipped with both front and rear pockets. They also had buttoned tabs at the waist in order to cinch the waist. For airborne troops, treated canvas cargo pockets were added to the trousers. In the ETO, initial issuance of the M1943 was slowed as a consequence of opposition by some U.S. commanders. However, as U.S. and Allied troops pushed into Germany, more M1943 uniforms or components of the uniform were issued as the supply situation including replacements directly from stateside arrived and the weather became harsher as winter arrived. In use, the M1943 was very popular with the men in the field, being relatively comfortable and having large amounts of pocket space. Topic. Experimental tropical uniform In 1943, after extensive testing in the swamplands and jungles of Florida and Panama, the U.S. Army determined that an experimental tropical uniform made of bird cloth known in Britain as Grenfell cloth, would best protect soldiers from insects and disease while cooling the body and minimizing losses from perspiration. Bird cloth, as used in the experimental tropical uniform, was a single-layer uniform of untreated OD long staple Egyptian cotton, made in a tightly woven herringbone twill to prevent mosquito bites. In use, the uniform was intended to cool the wearer even when continuously wetted, as might be expected in a humid, rainy jungle environment. 
The uniform featured a short-tailed shirt, trousers with cuffs fitted with half-inch boot-top fastening tapes, and a flap-protected fly to keep out crawling insects such as leeches, ticks, and chiggers. Pockets were shallow and kept to a minimum to increase cooling. Users carried all their gear in load-bearing belts, suspenders, or in low-mounted field packs designed to minimize body contact, jungle packs. The uniform, always in short supply because of a shortage of bird cloth, was used in combat by members of the Office of Strategic Services OSS, and the Mars Task Force Army 5332nd Brigade Provisional in Burma. Because of the shortage of suitable weaving machines and resultant cost of weaving bird cloth, a less expensive 5-ounce OD cotton poplin shirt and trouser were issued on an experimental basis in 1944 for use in jungle and tropical regions, while reports were favorable, existing HBT stockpiles were deemed adequate, and the uniform was not adopted. U.S. <laughs> Army footwear Army combat footwear in World War II originally consisted of a basic tanned leather shoe, used with heavy canvas leggings, the model 1939, Shoes, Service, Composition Sole, or Type 1 Service Shoe. This was an ankle-high field shoe made of tanned leather in a dark red or russet color, originally with leather soles. The sole was changed to a rubber composition after 1940 and designated as the Type 2 service shoe. Soon after the U.S. entry into the war these shoes, which were also used as part of the Class A dress uniform, were replaced with a Rue-out field shoe made from leather uppers with a suede outer finish, and designated the Type 3 service shoe. The Marine Corps version of these shoes were commonly referred to as boondockers. In November 1943, the Type 2 and 3 service shoes were in turn replaced by a boot, the M43 combat boot or two-buckle boot. This boot had a permanently attached a two-buckled leather ankle flap, which was designed to replace the unpopular canvas leggings. The sole was made of synthetic or reclaimed rubber. Due to supply issues, soldiers can be seen wearing both the service shoes with the leggings and the newer combat boot. Topic: <laughs> Specialized combat footwear. A rubber-soled, canvas-top jungle boot was issued during the war for use by soldiers in the tropical and jungle environments typically encountered in the China-Burma-India and the Pacific theaters. The 10th Mountain Division's troopers occasionally wore the mountain boot, a low-quarter brown leather boot with a square toe and rocker-type sole, though this boot was phased out in favor of the Type 3 combat boot in the last year of the war. In 1944, the M44 combat boot, a high-top leather boot with full laces was adopted for service, but for the duration it was primarily worn by soldiers on stateside duty. Parachute troops beginning in 1942 were issued jump boots, high-lacing rubber-soled leather boots which were intended to provide additional ankle support when landing by parachute. Although these boots were to be replaced by the new M43 combat boots, jump boots continued to be worn throughout the war. Nicknamed, Corcorans, from the name of the first contractor to manufacture them, they have become a status symbol as the footwear of paratroopers and rangers. Overshoes were normally issued to army units during winter operations. In January 1945, some Army units operating in the ETO received shoe packs for wet winter wear. The shoe pack was a leather boot with rubberized lower top and sole, worn in conjunction with the wool ski sock. 
While it was effective in keeping feet protected from soaking and freezing ground, the shoe pack lacked foot support and tended to wear quickly. It also resulted in incidents of foot injuries when a soldier wearing shoe packs on a march in freezing weather stopped to rest, allowing perspiration soaked socks inside the boot to freeze. Topic. See also Leggings Uniforms of the United States Army Uniforms of the United States Marine Corps History of the United States Army United States Army enlisted rank insignia of World War II